Ah, I somehow feel worse than last week. I didn't think I was going to do a video this week. I decided I wasn't going to do an Eagles video unless there was something interesting that happened, um, which I really didn't think was going to come from this game. Uh, but that was a bit of a, an emotional ride. And to be honest, I am heartbroken. So funny story. Well, not so funny. Um, I deliberately stayed in last night on a Saturday night and I had an early night, went to bed by 11. I set my alarm for seven. I was going to get up a little bit early for the game. Anyway, I woke up this morning feeling suspiciously well rested and I was like, hmm, this is odd. Check my phone. I'd set my alarm for 7 p.m. Um, and I quickly went to the AFL app and saw we were winning 44 to 18. And my reaction was, first of all, that's great. And also, oh my God, I'm a dickhead. So I missed a lot of the, the good stuff, um, but I was still pumped when I woke up and, uh, you know, quickly fired up KO. And uh, it gets a little bit better after that. Jack Williams kicks a goal. Saints get a couple back, but it's obvious to see that um, the, the list of goal kickers was like Hewitt for his first goal, uh, Jack Williams for his first goal, Marrick's getting amongst it. Long kicks one of the craziest goals uh, from an Eagles point of view this year. I see Marrick on the field already. I'm like, oh God, who's gotten injured? And then I check Instagram and uh, Tim Kelly and Luke Edwards are both laid out with uh, illness. So in context, like to be up 44 to 18 or what was it? 40, 56 to 32 at halftime is a great achievement uh, when you take out Tim Kelly. You know, if I'd been awake and I'd seen Tim Kelly had come out of the side, I would have thought, fuck, we're on for a 120 point loss here. But uh, for whatever reason, we've clicked into gear and and showed the form that we showed in rounds one to three um, in terms of at least applying the game style, playing with a lot more confidence. And you could see once the, the players thought they could win, um, they started going a lot harder at the contested ball. There were some fantastic efforts, both by young players and old players. I, I, I really don't like criticism of Luke Shrew over the last few years. I mean, the, the biggest criticism you could offer him is he just can't get his body right. But when he, he plays out there, he was clearly our best player out there today. He does it both in terms of the way he exudes the leadership, um, and then he, he throws himself at the footy. His skill, his, his desire. I always find it stupid when uh, people have criticized his captaincy because he's happened to oversee the worst period in West Coast history history but in terms of what we want out of a captain he's definitely demonstrating it but yeah so I missed a lot of the good stuff and I'll have to watch that back but I can imagine it was good and in the second half wasn't bad at all it was just I think St Kilda sort of worked their way into the game and there was a point around that halftime mark where I saw a couple of young players get into a strap a scrap with uh, St Kilda players I think it was uh, Jinby and Chesser involved and they were thrown around and it was great to see but there was a part of me that went oh shit we're going to run out of legs here because they were excited and they should have been uh, and they, they did the right thing you don't uh, you don't shy away from um, a bit of biff you know it's not like they were throwing punches they were just you know dragging each other around that's what you want to see in a high intensity game but it then clicked for me I was like we're not going to run out this game we've got too much excited energy and the second half is going to be a real battle and that's what it was St Kilda came hard as you'd expect and uh, they are a good team on their day and that they've been a little bit shaky with their form and I'm sure uh, Saints fans watching that first half must have been thinking holy shit how bad are we but you just take it into context, I think that Eagle side is obviously a very, very different Eagle side to what we've seen in the last couple of months, and that's uh, arguably the most frustrating part. So Kilda started to win the stoppage battle, uh, which was something the Eagles were doing really well in the first half, uh, based on the stats. They're a strong clearance side, uh, and we are not. In particular, we, you know, Yo and Kelly missed from last week's debacle, and they were two of the better players last week. So to be doing so well in the stoppage stakes, um, largely thanks to Shui, who had something like eight clearances by the end of the game, that was an achievement, but that flipped in the third quarter, um, but we didn't drop our heads and we did, you know, concede. I think we gave up, a, you know, I think we lost a third quarter by four goals is what I'm trying to say there. We were up by one point at three quarter time. The Saints came clawing back and I think what was the difference, particularly in the second half, is we just couldn't take any pressure relieving marks, you know. We'd go long down the line to a contest and, you know, back in the day when the Eagles were good, we'd have talls all around the ground who could break up play by taking a contested mark. As the players grew tired, they started dropping even the easy ones and the effect of that is just that you're constantly under duress. When a player takes a mark, you can't underestimate how much that kind of gives players a little bit of a rest as opposed to when they've got to go back at ground level to try and win the footy back and players have then got to rush to help and they're not streaming forward. Little things like that, we just made it hard for ourselves. Um, and as we got more tired, those little skill, skill errors were the difference between the two sides. Overall, we were just finding it way too hard to, to score. And uh, obviously we kicked 12 goals, five. So we made the most of, to some extent, our opportunities. And St Kilda probably left a few on the board and uh, ultimately the better team won. Obviously they're the better team. But I must say I'm heartbroken 
you know, I, I knew at halftime, I was like, we're probably going to lose this. Uh, but I wanted to leave it as late as possible. And to be fair, to go down by eight points, um, we gave it a red hot crack against a good team. But there was still a part of me that was just so, so sad that we didn't win. I've been thinking, you know, as bad as things get um, from an Eagles point of view, that will just make the next win more special. And I thought that might happen today. Well, I kind of did and I didn't, but you know, there was a chance and I was hoping it, it only came down to like in the last couple of minutes, if we get a lucky goal or something like that, the game's back on our terms, potentially we win. But at the end of the day, we couldn't generate those opportunities. Uh, certainly not easily as well. And you know, Darling uh, has done his AC joint now. Uh, to what extent, we don't know, but I suppose the pleasing thing is so much of that was done off the back of um, some of the younger players. And that, that's probably a little bit too dismissive of some of the efforts. I'm looking at the stats here. Shuri far and away our best of the field. Bailey Williams won the hit outs against Rowan Marshall, which is no mean feat. Rowan Marshall was still one of the better players on the field uh, for St Kilda, but for Bailey Williams to um, have 39 hit outs, a goal and 14 touches, and for us to really notice when he's not in the ruck, um, that shows how far he's come as a footballer. Tom Barras, absolute monster down back. Uh, he did his absolute best. Uh, Petricelli, aside from that miss late in the game, that unforgivable miss, um, you know, he had a good game. Marek had two goals and 13 touches. Elijah Hewitt. Let's talk about Elijah Hewitt for a second. I've been thinking this entire year that I'm shocked that that within the Eagles fan community, there isn't more hype about Elijah Hewitt because as far as I can see, the way I look at it, he is our best young prospect. Jinbi and Long in different ways have also been really, really good this year. And I thought, I, I noticed that Jinbi is looking very composed uh, at AFL level now. And it's taken, you know, 15 games to get there, but you can see the product of investing in him and giving him plenty of time on ball. Little things like just taking a little second longer to get rid of the footy. Instead of just giving the first option, he waits for the best option. That shows uh, a little bit of growth there. But Elijah Hewitt, this kid has superstar potential. Wait until he can run through the midfield for large periods of the game because at the moment he doesn't have the tank but kicks a great goal wows up the crowd so you know he's going to be a bit of a cult figure i think the second goal was cousins like he kicked a goal like that in the preseason against port and he kind of replicated it there against St Kilda. and in a big moment too and i think this guy has champion potential honestly he's got midfield craft he proved that as an uh, underager and he will prove that at AFL level too, but the forward craft, the ability to kick goals, and did you see him fly for that screamer? He's done that several times too. I'm telling you, Elijah Hewitt is our future. He's got a bit of a swagger about him too. He's trying to wow up the crowd um, after that second goal. Um, and you know, there's a little bit of talk about him being a, a cocky kid, and that's probably true, but at the moment, you know, that's that's wholesome stuff. He's just wowing up the crowd who's getting around um, the Eagles. So big fan of Elijah Hewitt. Hoff and Chesser, I'll shout out as well. I mean, Chesser didn't do anything spectacular, but um, you know, you contrast it to how we looked in the first month of this season, and you just looked a bit like a deer in the headlights. He is not looking like that at all. He had a great uh, run through the center there with that burst uh, speed, like an absolute standout in terms of that burst speed there. If he can harness that and really use that as a weapon, um, you know, a couple times a game, that's going to come in handy. But even ge in general, just his composure. I, I remember one passage at the end of the game where he sort of bombs it out long to the wing and there's no one there. But other than that, I think we're seeing real growth there. And Hoff, you know, only had nine touches, but some fantastic defensive efforts, a couple of good marks. Um, I think there was a hole in the ball that he won at some point as well. So it's pleasing that the youngsters have um, really contributed to a, a very good effort there. And it was supported by the senior players really getting stuck in, in this game. And Shannon Hearn, I didn't even mention, but... He was really important coming back. Jamie Cripps, always been an underrated player. Didn't have the most polished game, I didn't think, but did he like 13 tackles? That's the sort of thing we're missing. And as I said, ultimately, what it really came down to was the players thought they could win that game, and so they gave it their all. And it is frustrating to think back on the last eight weeks or whatever it's been and wonder how it got so bad because we were capable of more. We had a very... That is the worst injury hit team we've put out this year. I think Harry Barnett was our last available player other than the two Cat B rookies that played in the Waffle this week. Other than that, it was Harry Barnett. Like, how many teams pick an 18-year-old ruck as their sub? So to produce that effort um, is commendable. And um, yeah, we are proud, but at the same time, I don't know if we should lower the bar so much that um, you know we should be stoked with that. I think we should be happy and pleased and excited, and the players would have gotten something out of that, and that is something to build off for the rest of the year. But we're still in a hole, and we've still got to earn back respect. If I could nitpick a little bit further again, um, and this is not a massive criticism, but it's just something that we still need to work on, was one of the other differences between the two sides when the game was uh, there to be won at the end was 
The amount of times a St Kilda player would pick it up surrounded by four eagles and I'd prematurely say, ball, thinking we were going to wrap him up and they'd still find a way to get the handball out. I think the technique of the tackling was a little bit off and at some times the intent, we just didn't quite go hard enough where it mattered. Now you're going to find examples of that uh, even from good teams in, in games like that. But St Kilda always really managed to find a way to get out of trouble um, and we really needed to outnumber them to generate anything meaningful going forward. So anyway, you know, we should be buoyant. Uh, I, I'm not trying to, it's been a weird tone this video i'm kind of like half pissed um, or sad more sad i'm not pissed and uh but also half you know really um pleased about what we saw particularly from some of the young guys elijah Hewitt should never get dropped again bailey williams has become a decent afl ruck and he has the growth and the potential to become an even better one luke shuey is an absolute champion but yeah um mixed feelings i'm hoping as time goes on i get more and more uh pleased than just sad at the moment um really wanted to win today really want to win Got the Gabba next week and the Brisbane Lions, so hopefully no records are broken there. Hopefully we're not too tired, um, and hopefully we get Tim Kelly back. That would be a big plus. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you thought, um, regardless who you go for. What did you think of the performance today? Um, St Kilda, really important win, I guess, in a sense. It was a big scare for them, and they would feel unlucky that they were the ones who played us um, straight after that you know, terrible performance against Sydney because obviously it incited some sort of response, and hopefully we carry that through for the rest of the season. But as always, guys, looking forward to your thoughts. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.